audience, welcome to Geek Beast, part of the Geekish Network. This is your daily rundown of geek news from geeks like you. I am your host, Summer Punch, and with me we have got Chuck. What's up, everyone? Here again on Hump Day. <laughs> on the Hump Day. On the Hump Day. <laughs> and Sintel. Yo, what is cracking? Yo, Hump Day. I'm telling you, it's halfway through the rest of it with two days from Friday, and the weekend <laughs> is right around the corner. Y'all Let's know what go. Friday yeah. is. That's so song. Oh, hi, Miss Micah. Guys, I have to announce Miss Micah and I are BFFs on Animal Crossing now. She just came to my island. I just went to her island. Her island is fantastic. I'm going to just scrap everything and start all over and copy <laughs> her. So, uh, hi, Miss Micah. That was really fun. It was fun hanging out with you. Look at this. Look how accessible we are to, to our lovely fans. You reach out, you might, and we just might surprise you. You might get a chance to be introduced to some Animal Crossing properties. Up here. This <laughs> is amazing. Accessible is, is more like, I was like, I want to play with somebody. Miss Micah. And then I hunted her down on Instagram. <laughs> and I was like, come play with me. It was like playground level kind of shit. Like, do you want to play with me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Look at that. It was cute. It was very wholesome. <laughs> Animal Crossing is so cute. Uh, <laughs> she said Digital she tea parties, ladies hers, and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. It was basically that. Yeah. Hers is magical. Disney-esque. Well done, woman. Well done. She even has a goddess shrine. I don't know if that's what she intended, but there was literally a goddess shrine there. And I was like, I see you, Miss Micah. I see you. She's like, I'm a goddess. <laughs> she is. She Respect is. Respect the game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys, let's get into the news into today. It. Tensions are high at IGN after management claims that the Palestinian post that they took down earlier this week, or I think maybe it was last week, was not corporate interference, hmm, suspect. The weekend before last, IGN published uh, and then pulled down some links to charities supporting Palestinian victims who had been devastated by Israeli violence. This spurred over 80 IGN staffers to sign and publish an open letter decrying corporate, management, corporate management's subversion of their editorial autonomy and demanding mm. accountability. At first, it seemed like staffers would get their wish. Now, however, things have taken for a turn. Both Vice and Fanbyte reported on, uh, on an internal memo sent to IGN staff in which their chief content officer and site co-founder, uh, Peer Schneider, who previously implied that the corporate was uh, that corporate was listening to editorials grievances over what seemed to be corporate interference um, and made about a, uh, made an about face mm. and placed the blame for their posts removal on the editorial staff themselves, mm. which is mm -mm -mm, not very cool. So Vice and Fanbytes uh, reports, character, uh, reports characterize the current mood among IGN editorial staff employees as dejected and demoralized, perhaps more so than ever, because they called out their management and then their management blamed them back in return. So I don't know who you guys believe. Was it management or do you think it's IGN staff? Like, I don't know. This is, this uh, is scandalous now. I believe the IGN staff, editorial staff. But when it came to me, I started thinking that Shaggy song, It Wasn't Me. And that's the CEO. It wasn't me. That's, that's, what, that's what the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, <laughs> even if it was the editorial staff as leadership, mm -hmm. you take that hit. You take that hit for your team. You know I just that. don't know how they could lie about that because, like, yeah, if you're the editorial staff, are you, if it really wasn't your fault, and, or if you knew who did it, like, would you really blame your bosses, like, publicly like that? Exactly. If it actually wasn't true, like, that is a bold move, IGN editorial, and I just find it a little bit harder to believe that. But, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. there is a ton of reason for the IGN corporate staff to to say that it wasn't them, right? Because they have mm -hmm. a, a wider company brand to protect Whereas the uh, editorial journalists, they, they're just kind of more speaking on an individual journalistic basis. They're not necessarily representing a company. Uh, right. So I don't know. I kind of find it hard to, hard to believe. It sounds like they're definitely just passing the buck. But I'm also willing to believe that both things can exist at the same time as well. Uh, editorial, editorials are typically relatively large. Um, it's not necessarily just one person for all editorials. I mean, there's, there's other people that are below them that, that do the sure, you know, other yeah. subsections yeah. and stuff. And, and maybe one of them could have been swayed by corporate. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, obviously we, we don't, we don't know all of, of the facts, but I think it's possible that, that both, I think this is just one of those subject matters where thinking the right thing and doing the right thing conflicts and, mm. and they just don't know what to do with it. And you've just got a lot of people just running around like chickens with their head cut off. And now they just don't want to be the one holding the hot potato. 
uh, regardless, I I'm enjoying all of this because it's putting other people on notice regarding censorship of, of your own staff, uh, censorship yeah. of the news. In, in, Which is in, in not general. a good look in no, it's the not. news business. <laughs> exactly. It's not well, a good look. Exactly. So Snowden type stuff happening in the news business soon. You never know. Well, I'm ready for that to happen. That's what well, I'm I'll, excited. I want, I want editors to be put on notice as well. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, you know, take some responsibility. Think, think, think things out. Watch, watch the content that, sh- that you're, that you're not allowing to be put out based on, 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 on political ideas, shareholders getting their returns and, and corporate bosses. You know, if, if the news needs to get out there, it needs to get out there, editors need to be responsible. And then of course, it's harder to wave your finger at, at, at corporate because corporate doesn't give a shit about anybody else but their shareholders and the people that they're trying to pay out. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, it puts editors on notice as well. I think everybody should be a little shook and being like, yo, we need to really be on it regarding the protection of our staff, the protection of, of, of freedom of press and, and everything that falls under that, that umbrella. So yeah, I'm sitting here eating popcorn. Yes. More of this. Yeah. I, I don't need know. More I just this. like, for some reason, when it comes to like journalist drama, like within their own ranks, like, it's just, I don't know. That shit's so juicy to me. It's just like, okay. Like, cause they're <laughs> supposed to be the whistleblowers, right? They're uh-huh. supposed to be the ones that are telling us the truth. So when you see these like glimpses of drama behind the scenes, it is just inherently salacious, right? Yeah. Because like these are supposed to be the people that are telling the truth. So when you get two versions of the same story from the same source, from somebody who is supposed to be a trusted neutral source, right. like it just kind of throws you for a loop, yeah, you know? Yeah. And also like, this is just not a good time. Like the distrust in the media is already very shaky right now. Like, yeah. I feel like you guys should just get your shit together before you like publish a story, like get your story straight at least. Yeah, it's not, it's I mean, not a good look. Oh, open these channels of communication a lot more. Everybody needs to be on the same page. If you're going to make something does. as drastic as just taking something down, you know, mm-hmm. before you take it down, before you make and pull that trigger, you know, talk to your staff, figure out why, figure out the behind the scenes is, is, is the feelings is, that's going on behind these, behind, behind, behind these decisions being made. So now you're not, you know, being publicly executed <laughs> in the limelight for making these decisions. Talk to your people. Mm-hmm. Well, they have a hard time talking to them in a pandemic. You know, they get enough Zoom calls. <laughs> People just making decisions. It's not I like they can gather Zoom. everybody into the conference room. Uh. And be like, who pulled that article down? It wasn't me. But also, you know, I, I, when I think about this, like you think about like bigger, bigger publications, like, you know, like the New York Times or mm-hmm. LA Times or, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, they they've been through this heat and through the fire before yeah. like this stuff is not new to them when it comes to they have a whole process and a protocol yeah. regarding this and then you have somebody like ign who is a very big staple regarding geek culture and and things that are going on in the news and they may not be necessarily as vetted on the same levels as those bigger as those bigger corporations are so mm-hmm. if you are on that level of an ign you know get just get, get ahead of the game talk talk to some of your big brothers and big sisters and figure out how they get it done because they obviously don't seem to be having these types of problems seemingly yeah and i think that i mean this is something to be somewhat anticipated and, and expected uh, because the journalists um the younger journalists um or I would just say like journalists in general, like mm-hmm. I will acknowledge that the media probably does legitimately have like a leftward tilt. Right. And especially mm-hmm. like the younger you get, like these are, these are like common demographical uh, just truths, right. That the, the mm-hmm. younger people in those kind of positions, they tend to lean liberal. It's also based out of San Francisco, a really liberal city. Um, so you should kind of expect to some degree, and especially also because like the liberal tide is, is leaning towards sympathy for Palestine in this conflict where it hasn't always been that way. Uh, to some degree, I feel like the, uh, like the corporate headquarters should have kind of expected that um, and known that that would, that would be coming. But also there's just like, there's another interesting question. I'm, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Do you think it is Do you think it's the place of a journalist to share something like a charity supporting uh, Palestinian victims, right? Because that definitely shows like a a preference, a lean in one direction. Um, And like, you know, basically like, should these journalists be neutral Um, or should they share something like, you know, a charity for Palestinian victims, which is, I would say not completely neutral in that situation. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would still call it neutral because what they're sharing uh, links to is for casualties of war, uh, uh, collateral damage. And on both sides, it, it, you, as long as you, it, the people that are innocently involved don't deserve to die and don't deserve all the, the havoc r- uprooting their lives. I mean, uh, you have to show some humanity at some point. And so you don't think that sharing something like that compromises the journalistic neutrality? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think I think it's showing humanity and compassion. And we need to focus on that. I mean, we're in a world where war is definitely less than it used to be, but it's still mm-hmm. a problem. Right. Mm-hmm. I um I agree with that. I agree with that. I think I think it depends on the culture of the company. Um, and that, and something like that needs to be addressed well beforehand so that these problems don't, don't, don't pop up or not even problems, these issues, I don't think it's a problem. Um, if your, if your company's culture says, uh, we are not going to support any type of, of fundraising, um, because it could compromise the integrity of whatever the product or news subject matter is that they represent, if that said beforehand, and it's understood, and then something happens. Then, of course, there needs to be there needs to be consequences and repercussions because you broke a company's protocol that was already established. But if it has not been established at all whatsoever, then no, yeah, I mean, yeah. you do you. Is, is, and, you and knowing those differences too is on is the responsibility of the editorial staff, right? Who published mm-hmm. it and then took it down, apparently. Mm-hmm. Or we don't know who actually took it down. Maybe yeah, somebody's, hands in, yeah. Yeah, somebody's yeah. hands in the cookie jar. Yeah, somebody's hands in the cookie jar, and we'll find out. Give it time. Give yeah. it time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's digital click, uh, they share an interesting point too that their tax dollars are helping Israel already. So are they just balancing it out? So is it almost like uh, an attempt towards neutrality, I guess, in visibility or in an action by knowing well, that our tax dollars as Americans are going our, our towards tax the dollars hurting as those Americans, people? And then, yeah. uh, sorry, didn't cut. Our tax dollars no, as no, Americans no. are going to the war machine. And what this charity is doing is going to peace and love. There's a yeah. difference there. It, yeah. it, it, it's different in... Somebody threw a charity uh, 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 a link up for the war machine of Palestine, and we're going to mm-hmm. we're going to this link buys Palestinians guns instead of rocks to throw at tanks or missiles or more rockets to shoot into uh, Israel. It, it's not doing that. What they're saying is there's collateral damage and people mm-hmm. are dying mm-hmm. and injured and homeless and displaced, and we need to take care of those people. These are people that didn't volunteer to fight. They're they're just living their lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you there. In a land that's uh, occupied by an outsider. So yes, that yeah. that's a, there's a whole thing there. So yeah. um it'd be different if it was money going toward charity going towards the war machine, but it's not going to war machine. It's going to the collateral yeah. damage of war. Where Fun our tax fact, dollars are the going US- to war machine. Yeah, the fun fact: the U.S. Uh, almost entirely backs all of Israel's mil- uh, Israel's military, um, and pretty much all of their weapons come from us. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's fun to think about. Yeah. You know we what the fun role. fact is that all the money we put in Israel could cover everybody's college debt in America. It could cover a lot more than that. Yeah, they could college debt. Yeah. <laughs> it could it could make all school projects. free infrastructure. Uh, yeah, improve our yeah. education system. Improve our transportation grid. Like just there's a lot we could we could do all that, but we should sell them <laughs> weapons. Yeah, yeah. Making choices. Yeah, or give them weapons. choices. Sell them yeah. and give them weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, on to the next story. Amazon is now in talks to buy MGM for nine billion dollars. Actually, you know, what? I think there was an update to this. And Amazon has actually sold, right? Yes, mm-hmm. and or bought. They bought, bought. bought MGM mm-hmm. for nine billion dollars. Amazon yeah. has sealed the deal with eight point four billion dollar deal to buy MGM, the company that owns the iconic Hollywood studio known for releasing movies like James Bond, the Rocky franchises. The deal sets a course to amp up. Amazon Prime Video with new programming mined from MGM's long history to bolster Amazon's existing original production arm, Amazon Studios. Amazon said MGM's gold mine is an intellectual property that can leverage for, or that they can leverage for making new content, the beloved franchises that Amazon can now tap into to make new material as well. The real financial value, um, quote, uh, behind this deal is the treasure, uh, the treasure trove of the IP in the deep catalog that we plan to reimagine and develop together with MGM's talented team, mm. said Mike Hopkins at Amazon, uh, who is Amazon's senior vice president of Prime Video and Amazon Studios. 
Um, He's excited. Yeah, yeah. He, is. He, he should be because Amazon's lineup is lackluster. <laughs> and they, need, I know. they, need, they need bullets in the clip, man. Like, and yeah. they're UI. They're UI. Like, if you just get you. It's bad. It's, it's confusing like, and it's all subtitles? over the place. Have it's, you tried to turn on subtitles on the yeah. It's like, it makes you pick the font size. Like, right. Amazon, it, don't. I don't want to pick the fucking font you size. You can pick the color, color and all that. You it don't like that? Like, it's too much. Yeah, it's, it's too, too much. much. I love you that. should know better. And they have God. x-ray. They they have they, x-ray. They do have yeah. x-ray, though. They, they the only enable us to buy from anything, like buy anything in the world and ship it to us within two days with a single click. You could literally go to on Amazon and buy it with a single click, and then it will arrive in your house in two days. And they can't yeah. fucking figure out subtitle UI? Like, nah. come on. It's just... Oh, okay. There's Sorry. one there's one good thing on the Prime platform on the Prime video platform that I really love that's not really on any other platform on the level that it that X-ray. they have it. And that is no and that is when you hit the pause button and it lets you know who the actors are in that particular scene. That's called X-ray. That, is, that, is that what it is? Is X-ray? X-ray. Uh-huh. Okay. X-ray. That is dope. That is Now dope. that cool. is the one if it's any one caveat I'll give it. They, I'll give it that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only other reason than why that, I know that everything actors... else is horrible. It's yeah. so just it's frustrating. It's all it's over terrible. the place. It's spread Their out all over the good. place. You know, one thing I do also like mm-hmm. though about Amazon Prime is that it almost acts like a video rental, right? So if mm-hmm. they don't have access to all the IPs the way that Netflix does, right? It's not like right. just paywall to get in and then everything's free. But they seem to have like everything else. You just have to rent it or buy it, which isn't like great. But like if you can't find it on Amazon, Hulu, HBO, all the other things, right. like you can probably find it on Amazon. And if you're willing to pay for it, then like at least it's there. Yeah. I think I think that was their original idea that when they did free free plus shipping, two day shipping, and they were like, yeah, and we'll throw in Amazon Prime as well. And I think that, yeah, we're throwing in as well is is kind of like. Um, we're not really serious about this platform, but we'll They're give not. you this quick bonus so that you can see some B movies that were made in the seventies. And yeah. then, and then the streaming arms race happened. Mm-hmm. All right. And then they realized they were like, well, we've got a platform that's set up that's already established to present to these millions of actually billions of customers that they have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of customers that they have. So we might as well take it seriously because for me, Amazon treated their video platform as a method, like you said, Summer, to get you to either rent the movie or to get you to buy the movie. Mm -hmm. It was one of those two things. And they threw a bunch of B movies that, that were, that were freebies. And I think they're trying to redefine that Mm -hmm. so that they're, they're, they're not just trying to like, shake you down to get you to buy some something that's not available for free yeah yeah yeah. that is a good point although it doesn't feel like a double paywall but that's basically what it is it is right because you have to have you have to pay for amazon prime Mm -hmm. to get amazon prime video right but i kind of feel like amazon prime subscription is like so ubiquitous or maybe this is just me talking from like a very i don't know privileged position where like i just fucking buy it every single year (laughs) Because it feels worth it to me, although I'm probably not getting that much savings on the two-day shipping. Um, but it just kind of feels already included. Like, I feel like I got Amazon Prime for free. But you're right. It is definitely a double paywall because I'm paying to get in. And yeah. then I have to pay to rent more or buy more movies. Yeah. You know? And, let's and they're not honest. even cheaper discounted, too. Like, I paid $17 for, like, a like a 20-year-old film. And I was like. Yeah. yeah it's a hustle. It's cheap. It is. It, and, and it's so frustrating because you'll search for it and it pops up. It is like, I say like 90% of the stuff you look for is there on Amazon. Like yeah. then it's, it's never available for streaming. Like most no. of the time it's just, we will read no. it or you can buy it. You know, what's really interesting about this article is that MGM was saved by James Bond. It was the franchise that saved MGM studios mm. and Jeff Bezos is a Bond villain. MGM. <laughs> so is he going to kill James Bond the franchise? Because he is a Bond villain. He's Lex Luthor. I tell everybody he's Luthor. Kind of looks which, like Lex Luthor. Which mountain do you think he has hidden his lair underneath? Oh, and do you God, think there's man. a motive of alligators? I'm figured somewhere by kill the Mar- Mar- Mariana Trench. I was like, Kilimanjaro underwater. sounds good. Kilimanjaro. <laughs> yeah, Kilimanjaro. Yeah, Kilimanjaro. And, and um, the founder Atlantis, of Oracle. Yeah, yeah. Atlantis. Uh, he's under he's under Annapurna. He's under mm. so, does MGM really have any like real bangers outside of like Bond? Rocky. I know they got RoboCop and they got Rocky. 
like those are, are we, movies. Though, are we really like, like swooning over MGM's catalog? I'm are about we? to pull up, I'm about to pull up MGM's catalog. Y'all got me want to pull up MGM's catalog because I'm tell curious. us in the I mean, chat. Anybody people, in the chat? Yeah, we're getting yeah. If we're getting anything from MGM that's just like a winner. We feel free to embarrass us, but. So far, I'm not impressed with MGM. I mean, it's a no. classic, though. Yeah, like the lion. There's a bunch of there's classics. Lion, like, rah, you know? But, but here's, here's another thing. Here's another Iconic. interesting thing. Like, with the, with the Bond property, like, mm-hmm. even though they owned the right to the actual product, what I'm hearing is that they don't necessarily own the rights for distribution. So that's a whole other different animal. And we're trying to figure out, yeah. like, how are they going to to move that? Because just because they have it doesn't mean they can just throw it on the platform because somebody it else back. owns the distribution yeah. rights. Yeah. back. Right. Well, so, let me, well, let me throw a wrench in this because we have additional news on top of this story. Amy Klo- Senator Amy Klobuchar has called on the Justice Department to probe the Amazon MGM deal, too. So sorry. on Tuesday, mm. yesterday, Amazon announced that it had reached the deal. Um, and Amy Klobuchar just wanted to get in the action and want to have some fun because it's like, you know, it's a huge merger. There's a lot of antitrust issues, of course. Mm. Um, but uh, let me see. In a letter today, it's, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat, uh, Democrat from What's MN? What's MN? Oh, Minnesota. 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 <laughs> Minnesota. One yeah, states MN. don't matter. <laughs> Senator from Minnesota. <laughs> don't don't great, don't pop quiz me on like fifth grade uh, geography. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she sounded the alarm over the size and the scope of the deal, calling on the Justice Department to investigate the acquisition before it finalizes. Uh, open quote from herself. This is a major acquisition that has the potential to impact millions of consumers. The senator said in a statement on Wednesday, the Department of Justice must conduct a thorough investigation to ensure that this deal won't risk having, or harming competition. Uh, Klobuchar chairs the committee tasked with overseeing competition in digital markets in the Senate. So she's getting in. She's getting in on this, making sure nothing, nobody gets too frisky. Nobody gets uh, any deals closed before she has a chance to investigate. I feel like that's a good idea. Um, um, yeah, I think I think every major deal should be investigated. That's what I think. Yeah. Every major, every big deal. When one big company swallows another big company, we need to investigate antitrust. Because if this is the case, one day Amazon will swallow up Facebook, then swallow up another company, yeah. then swallow up Netflix. I feel like antitrust hasn't really been taken very seriously in the last like mm-hmm. thirty years of, Shoot, of just not like since US. they broke up Bell. <laughs> yeah. Ever since, yeah, ever since the Reagan administration. <laughs> yeah. Ever since the Reagan administration. Let's be honest. It's just um, I got some list of movies for you guys. They have the National Please. Lampoon okay. movies. The all right. Oh, movies. I like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's a classic. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they the, can, they, the so they can expand movies. these franchises. Rocky, Poltergeist, Poltergeist. They own Pink That's Floyd. That's a scary movie. Yep. They okay. own Pink <laughs> Panther. They own the Beastmaster. Ooh, the Beastmaster. Was See, cool. they can remake that. that. Um, What's the Beastmaster? War Games. Would you like to you know, play a game? Beastmaster? Oh my God, Summer, we're gonna watch Beastmaster. It's Beastmaster like is a great B movie. It's an eighty okay. great eighties B movie. The little ferrets. Uh, Kodo and Poto. Kodo and Poto. I forgot. Right. I remember this, that. This is not a very strong lineup, Chuck. I'm. I'm it's still. It's all old stuff. Don, all this stuff is yeah. in the 80s. And these are also these are all movies too. I they mean, are. like we all know be, it's, it's in TV series now. You can yeah, I guess they could use the IPs. But I mean, like idea. Red Dawn is not going to make me run to Amazon Prime. Like no Red Dawn. That's but a lot of money to spend for some old movies. Starring. You think they overspent? I feel like they're just spending to dominate. This is this is definitely some antitrust for Conan. Conan, I can see them doing something with Conan. I can see them doing something with Conan. I'm just not impressed with this. I'm just I mean, like, like nine home. Billy? That's a lot of money Space for some ball. old stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mel, if Mel was it Mel Blank, is that was his name that directed it? Mel Blank. We also have to think MGM doesn't have a lot of money to make a lot of new properties. With the injection of a sugar day like Amazon, they can make all kinds of stuff now. Like if you're if your only claim to fame is Bond and that's it, like the big claim to fame, it's the one that saved just, them. It was the new franchise with what's yeah, but name? hasn't like the popularity of Bond gone down recently? Anyways? Yeah, I say like, it has. I feel like I just I'm sorry, Daniel yes. Craig killed Bond. Like, I don't know why they chose him. He's I feel the same way. He's not do. hot. He's I mean, it seems like a cool guy. Sure, I guess nothing against him, but like, is he a Bond? No, I don't think he's a Bond. Oh, well, he's the first blonde Bond, right? No, like the first big mm-hmm. thing. Like most of them were like brunettes. They also first have Stargate. Bond. Stargate. Ooh, don't now now you now you tickling my nerves. Do we know the already? next Bond? 
Do we know the next Bond? They have to really like. Yeah, it's the they, they finished shooting it right. If yeah, I remember, I think they're done shooting. Yeah, I think they're gonna do a yeah. switch and bake with us though. Yeah, because they got the the black lady. It's not Reggae guilty. John Page. I don't think it's the, the black double lady. O's. I think she's another character. Yeah, she's a double wait, O. But wait, we don't know they, her number. They casted a black woman. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Yeah. yeah, she's a double O, but we don't know. She's an unknown know British actor that yeah. we don't know. She's probably famous in Britain, but she's and not it was a big America. deal. There was a lot of it. Uh, it was a lot of uh, internet hate regarding yeah, her. They did a lot of well, they were Brady. talking about maybe doing Idris Elba for a long time, right? But yeah, it yeah. Didn't... yeah, but nobody, nobody from MGM, I think, officially said that they were going to pull the trigger on that. It Wait, was just the sure internet it's... being happy. Yeah. yeah, well, they should have done it. They should have listened. Yeah, with he's, with Reggae Jean Page, it'd be uh, Idris Elba and Reggae Jean Page in the same movie. He's younger and fresh. Idris. But I, I can see why he's older. But wait, are you guys sure that the next Bond has actually been casted? Because I just Googled mm -hmm. it and it's still like all speculation news. No, they they shot scenes. They released a trailer. Yeah, I think I, I thought that they Someone dropped her name in the chat. I don't think she's the I don't think she's the the, the third bond they got I love how this too. is no longer like well they they tried show. to say that she was supposed to be like next up and and that just that's not yeah. the case yeah yeah i think she's going to be a she's going to be a double o i think that's what they mean by yeah i don't think she's going to be bond the, the i don't hobbit know what that means too. what do you mean the hobbit is like double o as in like not James well, there's Bond? there's other yeah agents 007 is just a level of the type of secret agent that he yeah. is in certain it, levels numbers. based on your based on your number. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. So so there the, could be multiple James Bonds. There are they change the yeah. moniker 007 is known as James, James or Jamie I think I think they named it James and Jamie. Where 003 is Charlie, and 002 and 001 nobody knows. Nobody they're, knows they're, who they're one and two are. Well, definitely nobody knows who number one is. Yeah, they're nameless. They're, they're such the good queen. spies that people don't know who they are. They don't have a Could moniker. Be. You the never queen. know. But I think I think <laughs> so three should be should be Idris Elba. <laughs> and then Yo, I want Idris. that. What's that? Oh, it's, <laughs> 001 is actually Meghan Markle. I would absolutely cry. That's the next that's James hilarious. Bond. Oh, you know. that's hilarious. That's oh hilarious. my God. The UK would lose their <laughs> fucking mind. Boy. Boy. Oh, Yo, it would be so, so hot. MGM does have something that you want to see. Wow. MGM does have something you want to see. I would love it. You know what MGM has, Summer? What's up? Tomb Raider. <gasps> really? Oh, uh, look, yeah. look, look, look. Look at her face. Look at her face. Yeah. Look at her face. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm on board. Like, wait a minute. Well, I was already paying for Amazon Prime. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I would definitely subscribe mm -hmm. twice for that. Yeah. Oh, That's funny. Goodness. But maybe, okay, something. now I'm now I'm not off this Meghan Markle being 007 game. <laughs> just, just dead right now thinking what happened. I was on a flight to London once and these drunk, uh, I think it's called a hen party, uh, where you know it's like a bachelorette party. Oh. Uh yeah, yeah. I'm and so uh, and they were party. they were very <laughs> drunk. I was very tired. It was like a it was like a red eye or something. They were just fucking wasted off champagne and they were having so much fun. I just happened to sit next to one of them. And I was sleeping the whole time. So you know how you sleep on an airplane? You're just like, mm -hmm. it's just not a pretty look. Anyways, they're mm -hmm. like, hey, 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 do you know who Meghan Markle is? You look like Meghan Markle. And I was like, who? I, know, I didn't know who she was at the time. But they're, then they Googled her and they showed me. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you. She's very pretty. Thank you. And then I kept falling asleep. And then they, I woke up to them fucking taking pictures of me just like, <laughs> like on the fucking airplane. Damn. And like, girls, why? Like, I'm Get not your in your bachelorette wagon. party. This is not mm. fair game. This is not within the territory of drunk pictures. Yes, like, you don't do that. You're officially now a part it's of probably their circulating now. somewhere on their, their like social They're like, media. We feeds. were Megan Merkel on the airplane. Look at her. <laughs> She's on the airplane. I'm still flattered. <laughs> I yep. wish she didn't take that picture. Anyways, all right, guys, we are way over time. Uh, so I guess we're going to wrap the news for today. Oh, guys, I got a question for you. Um, up? Chuck, I threw this to you in the chat, but I'm just going to do it because you didn't respond. I, uh, I'm i gonna I'm curious to hear some feedback from everybody in the chat. Uh, I have two questions for you. One, how did you hear about the show? And then two, uh, do you guys like a 30-minute show? Would you guys like more? Would you guys like less? 45 minutes? That's we're not going less because we can't shut up. But just, we can't just shut asking. up. <laughs> yeah. We can't shut up. Yeah, we're not. Going we got to a lot to say. Less even yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Chuck, is that fair to ask? I'm just really curious. That's fair to ask. To say That's fair to we ask. Wanna, we're here for you guys, so we want to know what you think. That's fair to ask. Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the chat. 
Speak on it, man. Uh, Miss Micah heard us about us from Digital Click. So, so word of mouth is what I'm hearing as a yeah. marketer. I like yeah. that. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth. All right, cool. Well, that's good to know. All right, well, we are trying to grow our network and grow our viewership base. So mm-hmm. feel free to share um, and, you know, feel free to like drop any, I don't know, suggestions on like how to grow the base too. Ooh, what? Yeah. Like winging it here. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is okay, Chuck. I'm just like decided to ask them. Um, oh, that's longer. Fine. We have another mm-hmm. show. Oh, okay. we have, we have binge yes, we do. Oh, 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 that's nice. That's nice. We have. Oh wait, today? Oh, it's yeah, Wednesday. It's Shit. Wednesday. I thought it was Tuesday. In my head, it was Tuesday. And I was just like fucking around. All right. Okay. So we actually have to keep on a schedule. All right. Fine. 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 All right, guys. That is uh, that concludes the news segment of our show for today, mm. or just the bullshitting and and just rambling of the show today. Mm-hmm. Uh, up next is more bullshitting and rambling on binge worthy. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry. Okay. I was gonna say you set that up, but I set it up for you, and then I just smacked you down. Anyways, that was unfair. Anyways, can we bring in Courtney and Randy for crosstalk? And by the way, shout out to Digital Click for also referring us to your friends, Miss Micah. It was so fun playing on Animal Crossing with you. Uh, hit up Digital Click if you ever need any um, creative done. And um, and just, I don't know, just appreciate them. They're really good friends to us. Also, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to us here on Twitch. And if you love what we're doing, please consider subscribing, which I just said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can link your Amazon Prime account, which I assume everybody has by now, and link it to some, uh, Prime Gaming. And you can sub to us for free. Once a month, it costs you nothing, but it helps us out a ton. Hey, Randy. Hey, what's, what's yep. going on, everybody? No That's today. my dog. No, Courtney. Courtney's That's having a hot summer. Courtney's not here. Come yeah, on, yeah, Courtney's on vacation today. Yeah, she's on, she's on, on high girl holiday. She's on high girl summer. Great time. I like you know, that. Like you that. out there. We miss you, Courtney. hot girls going on holiday. Mama, hey, yeah. Hot girl summer. Hot girl Yo, the kids are running amok. Yo, we over here flipping tables and getting in the liquor cabinet. Well, she's not here to distract us with her different mm. backgrounds and decor. She keeps changing it. I'm like, I just can't help being pulled into like the decor, you know? Like my my head's in the Animal Crossing, building your island space. Oh, Miss Micah, you should chime in on Animal uh, on uh, Courtney's background decor next time she's on the show. Yeah. She, she this woman, she knows how to design. Uh, okay, Randy. So see, even on? when she's not here, I still get distracted by decor. Ugh. Okay, Randy, what's up? <laughs> Hall of hey, Justice, summer. what's up behind you? Okay, now we got a new background to discuss. Uh, well, we, we talking about Jupiter's legacy and, you know, Ooh. it's a derivative of some DC properties and Marvel properties. So I thought about having okay. the home of all the superheroes as my background. That's actually quite oh, Okay, fitting. I like that. Hall of Justice. Quite fitting. I like what Hall you of mean. Justice, baby. And, and, not, and not Charles Xavier's uh, mansion. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I or, like the mutants, but um, I'm a D, I'm a DC really? guy. I'm a DC guy. Oh, you're a DC guy. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a DC. Guy. You know DC this. Guy. I know. You it. set I me did. up. You I you know. trying to I set did. me up? I did set you up. I so did. <laughs> I've known this all your life. Okay, okay, guys. So so set up the show a little bit. Like, is it live action? Is it anime? Is it, just, it's a live so, action tell us. show? It's okay. a live action show, and it's kind of a a trope on superheroes. Mm. And their family, okay. and what it would be like if you were a family of superheroes. Mm. Mm. What is it streaming mm-hmm. on, Randy? Tell the tell the Netflix. What... It's streaming on Netflix, and it just came out. Uh, yep, about came out about two, three weeks ago. Two, three, three weeks ago. ago, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, damn. And you yeah. already binged the whole season. Right. We binge yes. everything we do every mm-hmm. week. That's what we every do. Week. We bring That's it what to we the do. people, man. <laughs> we do your right, homework then, for I'm... you. I'm yes. not going to ask you to spoil the show, but can you guys give me each a hot take? You don't have to say up or down because people should tune in right. to know if they should watch it. But just give me a hot take each. Um, I I enjoyed the show for its realism. Mm. For its realism. Yeah. Sorry, wait. I'm going to ask you to expand. What does that mean it, to you? It, you know, it, a lot of things. It, it actually showed actual trauma between a family that is super, okay, so emotional yeah. yes okay. very emotional and, it, and they try to keep in a, a, a state of realism where even mm. the, the head of the organization um he's a very interesting person that mm-hmm. his legacy he's trying to have live on is for superheroes to do right and not get involved mm-hmm. too involved 
I see. Okay. Okay. So un- unlike the Avengers universe where it's like the incident and it, like buildings are crumbling and it was like, oh, yeah, the, the next day. <laughs> it, yeah. And the Avengers that universe is a uh, good or bad. Actual there's reaction. other things where they're trying to be good. Where in, when see. you look at Marvel, people are just naturally good. Like Batman okay. is just good. He's not struggling with himself to be good and doesn't have to state his code to people trying to walk in his feet, walk behind him as he's the leader. Okay. Mr. Randolph, can you give me your hot take? Daddy issues. That's, that's yeah. my hot take. Oh, that's a Daddy good hot take. Issues. That's a hot take. Yeah, a I hot like take. that. Yeah. That's a hot take. Okay. Do you want to expand on that or do you want to just keep it? No, nah, I just want daddy just issues. Keep <laughs> just keep it hot. Ooh, sizzling. Yep, All right. That's it. That's it. it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Sintel, what's your hot take? Um, uh, author. I'm a, that's my hot take. The hot take is the author. If you are a fan of properties like uh, Wanted, uh, Kick Ass, uh, mm-hmm. The Kingsman, King, The Kingsman, Kingsman's, mm-hmm. I think that's what yeah, it's called. Kingsman. Mm-hmm. I have opinions, Kingsman. but yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the author the author that did those three uh, did this did this property as well. If you're a fan of of that style of storytelling, it's a little bit different than those three properties. But if you're still a fan of his of his his method of storytelling, then you, you'll you'll really enjoy this as well. Mm-hmm. So would you say then, based on the other ones, that it's from the perspective of a of a angsty privileged white boy? <laughs> yes, actually, one hundred percent, absolutely, <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely, yes. Stuck yeah, the landing and everything. Ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> you just did a Simone Biles on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna give you no. the gold medal. Like, <laughs> yeah. It is definitely that. And we're the champions there. are planning your background. That's your new background music because yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> and, and 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 then that's an interesting view to see it, and that's what we're gonna talk about a lot. Yep. I think I think that's gonna be a view point that we're gonna talk about is seeing it through that lens. Because as much as I enjoyed the property, I'm sure. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I, I would assume that uh, me mm-hmm. and you, Michael Hertz, and enjoyed the viewing as well. It's got it's got its problems and it's got its things from yeah. certain types of standpoints and viewpoints that may not may not resonate. So, um, you, if you okay, want to hear, okay, I, I can't help. I can't help. I got one more question. Is this yeah. a, is this a unique new perspective on a overprivileged, angsty young white boy? Because we've gotten a lot of those. Like, is this does this bring anything new to the table? <sighs> I was going to talk about that later, but I don't think so. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm not going to okay, spoil okay. I'm not going to spoil But everybody stay tuned in the chat because they are going to answer that question right after we shut down and pop right back up. Uh-huh. Uh, all right, don't go nowhere. Wait, guys, one right. more time, the name of the show that you guys are covering? Jupiter's, Jupiter's Legacy. Legacy. Don't go Jupiter's nowhere. Legacy. Come back Legacy. and hear this hotness. Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot yeah. take today. <laughs> more hot takes to come. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Peace.